why why do we need open run and uh, what is the driving force no that um what is that what is this noise about because this is not only in the philippines and i'm glad to be part of uh to be part of the founding member of ayora uh because we're doing it early you know? uh, uh, there's always been a lot of talks about the philippines being um late in technology but that that's not true anymore we are the ones uh, in the philippines we are among the uh, leaders in in asia pacific in 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 some part of the world as well in testing and in exploring the new technology for telecommunications so i have four items in in this presentation but but let me just walk you through um the technology that changed our lives um or forced us to change our lives because um some of us really wanted it some of us were forced to do it because it's really the force behind the internet no uh, it, it's like the internet you can stop it you can change it uh, you cannot go against it it's really about um either you're following it or you're leading it but since the day of uh, mobile mobile communications no um we have it the the technology of mobile communication communications has enabled most of us or enabled the industry to flourish a lot of economies has been um uh has developed over the years because mobile communication has enabled it no? um from 2G back in the days of voice only to 3G where you where we introduced the technology introduced slower data service called GPRS edge uh and everybody knows that in the philippines we are the texting capital of the world back then sms is huge in this country and then there came 4g or what is known as lte where there's uh initially uh, there are stages of 4g or lte but uh, eventually it became the mainstream the mainstream technology that provides data services that we have never imagined it to be uh that it can be available anywhere you know wherever you are you know or anywhere in the world or for as long as you have a lte signal across the country or anywhere in the world then you can you cannot escape you have uh, the you can work you can play you can do whatever you want you can do your business in there but now um we have 5g right many industries and many operators mobile operators across the 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 world has actually deployed 5g technology and this is faster than 4g um there's a lot of promise moving forward for uh, for 5g especially on the enterprise side such as uh, network slicing uh, and a lot of uh, cloud computing will be enabled uh, for specific industries that requires specific needs uh, and that would be uh, the next frontier in 5G which is a 5G standalone system but what's next no we cannot just implement this the way we were doing it before right and that's the promise of open run right there's a new way of um using this technology especially that will benefit that will benefit especially the mobile network operators across the globe so in the coming well what open run has, has promised is that as compared to before where we are using monolithic technology from vendors the promise is it's open it's like your laptop it's like your computer where you can load any software you can buy as a computer with different brand and load any other software on it and that's the softwareization of the telco systems so and what is open run um why um that many of you are struck by the word the word run it's a acronym actually for radio access network and it basically means that your cell site is being disaggregated in open run environment so we have we have traditionally we have implemented a closed system wherein we buy or the, the telco um, 
operators around the globe, around the world, has actually implemented a system which is closed. No, there's a limited um, capability to to become creative. No, you are we are uh, limited by the capability of the specific vendors that supplies the the, the technology to us. In an open run environment, it's like disaggregating all the systems, decoupling the software from the operating system to the hardware. And we can make any, um, we can mix in much you know, from any other software providers to any other operating systems. But the key here is the openness, the open standards. And it gives a lot of opportunity for us. That's why we said it's very promising uh, because it enables us to have wider choice of partner vendors because there will be larger ecosystem when this is matured, uh, when this becomes mature in the marketplace or in the community of vendors and stakeholders. It will become more flexible and agile. And what we are actually banking on is that the, its ability to become more intelligent as it is today. The intelligence will be detached from, from the system. We can have more capabilities better than uh, that can be uh, more user specific or group specific or even service specific. But most importantly, the, that's why we are all gathered here today because the important uh, aspect of uh, open run is actually the word, the first word of it, which is open. The industry has to uh, work together. Um, mobile operators like us has to come together to make sure that everybody or all the stakeholders in the industry uh, will push the openness uh, moving forward. So imagine if you have different vendors or different systems that are working together. Imagine the, the beauty and the benefits that it gives to, to all of us. And in turn, more our customers will benefit. So you have different systems that interworking with each other. You have intelligent, you have intelligence that is residing at the core of your platform. And you have uh, you have a reason. You have a reason to drive down cost more effectively. And innovation will be the key. Um, the network, there's a term now called uh, uh, network as a code, right? So the, your mobile network or your fixed network can be a platform of, platform of innovations. Any software, any developer community can, any stakeholders in the developer community can actually create their own software and run it in the mobile network. And that's what Ayora is actually um, uh, hoping for, that in the Philippines, there will be more people who will be involved in developing telecommunication platform or services or applications over another vendors or another systems or other telcos in hardware infrastructure and operating system infrastructure. Better service, more innovations. It will definitely drive down cost. Of course, if we together push the industry to support uh, the technology, all the stakeholders support the ecosystem, more openness. But we still have a lot of things to learn. We're not saying we're not we're not saying we're there already. It's still. Uh, I'm sure there will be more speakers to to attest to what we will be saying here, but it's still in its infancy. There's a lot of um, traction in the last two years about Open Run. There's a lot of activities in, in, in Asia, and some of the, the, the pioneers are here today. Um, in Europe, it's becoming, there's a lot of testing as well. Uh, it's still a, I would say, in the pilot deployment mode, right? And in SMART, we actually have established our own laboratory uh, to test the capabilities of, uh, of uh, Open Run. 
uh, with our partner NTT, we've, uh, we did some prototype testing in our laboratory. We are very actively involved as well in, um, of course, Asia Open Run Academy being one of the founding members. Uh, we are also very much involved in a bigger scope, uh, which is disaggregation. Open Run is just part of a, the total disaggregation of telecom network. That's what I said earlier. It's the softwareization of uh, the telecom infrastructure. Um, but again, there's still, there's still a lot of things that we don't know, right? And it's good for us to start it early, at least in the Philippines, that the industry is coming together and trying to understand the benefits more than the promise, right? So because there's a lot of promise, but for us, uh, we call us brownfield operator or the incumbent operator. Um, we need to understand really the total cost, total cost of ownership. This, is a, this will be a different kind of discipline. Uh, there will be more IT professionals. Um, the transition from telco engineers to become IT professionals and vice versa will be more obvious in the coming days or in the coming, um, in the medium term. No? We have to be prepared for that. But there's also a lot of question for us. How do we start? Do we start with our greenfield? deployment or do we start with our existing network in our existing deployment these are still some of the questions no and uh, that's why there's a lot of trainings uh, sorry uh, pilot deployment going on around the world to ensure that they learn first no before they do massive deployment but are we ready right uh, nobody is ready uh, no operator uh, around the world is ready for up and run. Our systems are and processes are developed based on the technology that we've been using for the last two, three decades. Right? And there's a lot of changes that has to happen. The, the way we design and organize our infrastructure, the way our organizations will be set up, the knowledge and skill sets and competency of our people. And it's good that we are preparing this now through through our partnership with the academe, the vendor capability and our capability, our in-house capability to integrate. This is one of the bigger challenges that uh, we need to uh, understand and uh, conquer moving forward. Of course, when it comes to standards, it's not there yet. There are different implementations. There are different uh, approaches. Uh, and of course, what is more important for us is actually its performance, which translates to customer experience. We want a customer experience that will be at par or better than what our customers are experiencing today. 